visitors, Bristol City, dressed all in red this afternoon, who kick off. Attacking the goal behind which most of their supporters are amassed. And an early chance here with Nugent. Good tackle by Andy Tilson. Stops the City striker in his tracks. And today's referee, Jim Rushton from Stoke-on-Trent. And he could be a busy man. Hewlett in just ahead of Browning. coming under pressure and he's lost out Browning nicks it through to Channing Beadle looking for the return McCleary not a convincing clearance mistake by Hewlett Stewart for Beadle charged down by McCleary second shot well held by Keith Welsh First attack of any note there, it came from Rovers, it came from a City mistake by Matt Hewlett. The first shot was well charged down, the second equally well struck. And a fine save by Keith Welsh. Tilson just gets a foot in, it's broken for Agostino, Nugent and Tinian to aim for. Agostino's cross, Kevin Nugent, and the side foot into the back of the net. Bristol City ahead after nine minutes. And Kevin Nugent restored to the side in place of David Seal, and there's the justification for that decision. A mistake initially by Tilson, the ball came across, and really a simple tap-in. Kevin Nugent's sixth goal of the season since joining Bristol City. And for the fans in red and white at Twerton Park, that's by far the best he's scored so far. Barnard, Morgan's header. Still work to be done for Rovers. Bristol City just with a spring in their step, as you might expect from that goal. Channing in trouble. Nugent, Martin Cool. It was a good chance for the midfielder. And once again, it came from a Rovers error. Channing just lost his footing. The ball came back to Cool, who scored a few goals of late. He couldn't make that one number five for the season. Rovers now trying to test out the Bristol City back four. Steve Morgan cuts in field. Beadle on to Sterling. Beadle's gone for the return. Little ball in for Stewart, trying to turn. Good save. Very good save by Keith Welsh. Splendid play by Rovers. Beadle to Stewart. Brilliant turn and shot by him. Gurney was in on the goalkeeper. That's a fine stop. Clark, cushion header, away by Bryant. Real battle there, Bryant and Stewart. The verdict goes Rovers' way, it's a free kick, just a couple of yards outside the penalty area. Andy Gurney to take the kick. McCleary, appeals for handball. Finally, it scrambled away. The verdict is a corner for Bristol Rovers. Curled in by Gurney. McCleary was in trouble for a moment. He really did well to get it away. Good play again by Stewart. In for Beadle. On to Gurney. And Twerton Park has exploded. And he really has got a gift. 
for goals this season, Andy Gurney. None more precious than that one. A low strike which gave Keith Welsh no chance. Credit to Marcus Stewart and Peter Beadle for their appreciation in the build-up. A really great finish by Andy Gurney, the full-back turned midfielder. Rovers fans have suddenly found their voices. Still a danger though, here's Bent for Bristol City, past Morgan, Clark just did enough to put off Nugent. Great counter-attacking football from City, poor Steve Morgan while well, he was turned inside out, and when the cross came in, the defender just did enough. Tinian to Agostino. Shannon in with the tackle, helped by Gurney. There's no need for that, really. Tampa's beginning to flare there. It was Tinian and Gurney, the main two protagonists. Mr. Washington, who's done his best to let things uh, flow so far this afternoon. Deciding that it is time for action. Yellow card for Tinian, yellow card for Gurney. McCleary can't go past Cool. Tinian away from Channing. Agostino and Nugent ahead of him. Bent trying to get there. Tinian's cross. Might drop for Hewlett. Deflection. 2-1 to Bristol City. And on the stroke of half time, it's the youngster Matt Hewlett who's got the goal. Savage blow to Bristol Rovers coming just before the break. And a deflection which gave goalkeeper Andy Collett no chance at all. But uh, credit where it's due to Matt Hewlett. He was there when the ball broke loose. He struck it well and he maybe deserved his slice of luck. His first goal of the season for Bristol City. Browning looking to release Stuart early. McCleary the covering defender has to concede the throw Sterling Gurney looping header Beadle Stewart has scored the offside flag is up and Rovers celebrations cut short before they can get into full swing to be fair to the linesman the flag went up very early I think it was Peter Beadle who was in an offside position as Gurney's header looped across goal. The flag up long before Stewart found the back of the net. Sterling, little nick on for Stewart. Here comes Gurney. So too Welsh. And brave goalkeeping. And Welsh looks as though he's taken a knock in the face. said he were in trouble for a moment it was Stewart the deftest of flicks as two men converged Keith Welsh was bravely in there amongst the boots nice play Sterling good challenge though by McCleary just when it looked like it might open up Cool spreads the play wide to Bent Faced by two. Bent gets his cross deep to the far post. Agostino with a header. It's 3-1 to Bristol City. And it's a splendid goal by Paul Agostino. Well, just about an hour gone. And Bristol
Manchester City really in the box seat after some fine work by Junior Bates. His deep cross, and that's a great header, no chance at all for Collett. Bristol City, 3-1 up. Stewart leaves it to Gurney, Beadle now takes over. To Miller, Sterling available outside him, shot charged down. Morgan, deflection, corner. Fine strike by Steve Morgan, got plenty behind it. Luckily for City, a red shirt in the way. Rare chance for Marcus Stewart. Cross headed away by Barnum. Browning seizes on it. Low shots. I saw it late. Did well to get across in the end. Not the cleanest of strikes by Marcus Browning. Very nearly found a way through to that bottom corner. Eyeball to eyeball between Beadle and Bryant. Martin Cool trying to act as peacemaker. Stewart sprays it wide for Sterling. He wins the corner. Still 20 minutes left for Rovers. Tilson's up there. Hooked in, off the line. Appeals for a penalty. Nothing doing, says the ref. City escape. Well, the corner was played into the near post. Difficult to see who got the shot in. The City defender in the right place at the right time to just smuggle it away from the goal line. Here they come again. Beadle leaves it for Browning. Good save by Welsh. Everything behind it. Marcus Browning trying his luck from 20 yards or so. The goalkeeper had it covered. Miller to Browning. Clearance by Bryant wasn't the best. Helped out by Tinian. For a minute it's uh, two on two. Seal. Poor ball. Rovers press again through Sterling. Tilson trying to make room for the shot. And Walsh got it at the second attempt. Great attempt by the Rovers captain, made room for the shot, struck it well. Keith Walsh needed two bites of the cherry. Desperate stuff now for Rovers into the last five minutes. Tilson wide for Gurney. Everything forward of him. Gurney again, blocked by Barnard. Now Rovers are in trouble here. It's two against one. Nugent finds David Seal. And David Seal plants it into the corner. It's all over. It's 4-1 to Bristol City. And it's the classic counter punch. Well, Rovers banking on attack had left only Tilson back. It was two against one. He was never going to be able to stop City getting a shot in on goal. And David Seal put it right in the corner. Classic strike from him, his 12th of the season. It's all over now, City lead 4-1.
Well, Rovers have got a corner, but their fans are leaving in droves. And there's surely no way they can pull back three goals in five minutes. They're trying their hardest. It's a mass scramble. It is in. It's 4-2. And I think it's Billy Clark who's got the goal. Well, hardly a flicker of emotion from the fans or from the players. A scramble in the city goal mouth. And the defender, Clark, who poked it home but it really looks as though that'll be nothing more than a consolation for Rovers. Nugent. Forward by Miller to French. Difficult ball to control, though. Runs away off the forehead for a goal kick. a red letter day for Bristol City and their supporters they finally laid their Twerton Park jinx to win this the 80th league meeting between the Bristol clubs a goal scored by Nugent, Hewlett, Agostino and finally David Seal Gurney and Clark on target for Rovers it's their second setback of a bad week Bristol City doing all the celebrating the final score here at Twerton Park, Bristol Rovers 2, Bristol City 4. Yeah, we're full of high spirits at the moment. It was a good win, another three points, so just good to get one over on them. Seeing the disappointment at Ashton Gate in January, so it's pleasing. And for a young lad like yourself, I mean, how did you enjoy the sort of whole derby atmosphere? Um, it's good to get a goal on it. It's my first league goal um, and good to win, really. Yeah, the performance was was very pleasing um, it just it carries on from last week and the result is, is a delight uh, especially to our travel and support but we've been playing well without really getting the results and last week uh, I was maybe a little bit harder on the players because we, they played really great football but I say that we didn't deserve to win because we, we passed up so many opportunities today I've got to give them it they, they played well I thought it was a good game I thought both teams uh, contributed to the game uh, but for us being a away team to score four goals, I don't think anybody can take anything away from us. I think we've played better today than in our previous two home games, which we won. Um, you know, People complained about the performance in that, but they're happy enough with the result. Today, I think we've, we've had the opposite. We've had a poor result in terms of that, that score line, but the performance itself has been, been pretty OK. And over, over 50, 60 games a season, yeah, I've got to look at, uh, at the longer term side of it. And you know, had we won today, the three points were helping towards the, the, the playoffs. As we haven't, we've now got to work that little bit harder. And, and see if we can finish as high as we can. If that's in the top six, I'll smash it. We'll try and do that.